Welcome back to the SparkFun Inventors Kit for LabVIEW tutorial series. I'm Sam Kristoff from LabVIEW Maker Hub, and in this section, we'll learn how to read the value from a push button switch. In LabVIEW, I'll click Help and choose Find Examples. This will bring up the LabVIEW Example Finder, and I'll click Search and search for links. We're only reading from one push button, and it's a digital input, so we'll use the Links Digital Read One Channel VI. I'll double click to open it. I'll close Example Finder, and in the Serial Port section of the example, I'll choose our breadboard, which is COM3. On my breadboard, I've wired one end of the push button to 5 volts, and the other end to ground through a 330 ohm resistor. That pin is also connected to digital input 8 on the breadboard, so I'll change my DI channel to 8, and then click the Run button to run the VI. Once LabVIEW establishes a connection to the breadboard, I can press the button and you'll see the LED on the front panel light up. If I let go, it dims. Let's have a look at the code. I'll click the stop button to stop the VI and press Ctrl E to bring up the block diagram. First we establish a connection to the breadboard, then in the loop we call the digital read one channel VI. We give it a single U8, which is the pin, in this case, pin 8, and it outputs a single Boolean value. Outside the loop, we close the connection to the breadboard and handle any errors. Let's modify this code to count the number of times that we press the button. I'll expand the block diagram to give us a little bit more room, and I'll move the digital read all the way to the left side of the VI. In order to count the number of button presses, we'll need to store a value, and we'll use shift registers to do this. I'll right click on the edge of the while loop and choose add shift register. This will be a numeric value that represents the total count. So I'll go to the front panel and create an indicator so the user can see the count value. I'll right click to bring up the controls palette and choose numeric, numeric indicator, and I'll place that on the front panel. I'll name it value and then I'll double click on the edge of the indicator to find it on the block diagram. We want our count to start at zero, so we'll use a numeric constant of zero to initialize this shift register. I'll use quick drop, control space, and search for numeric constant, and place it on the block diagram, and wire it into the shift register. This way our count starts at zero every time we run the VI. Now, if the digital output value is true, we want to increment the count. If it's false, we don't want to increment the count. We can do this with a case structure. I'll right click to bring up the functions palette and choose structures, case structure, and I'll draw it on the block diagram. If we just wire in the digital input value to our case, in the true case, we want to increment this number. So I'll wire the number into the case structure and I'll use quick drop to place an increment VI. This will increment the value when our true case executes. I'll pass that value out and wire it into our numeric control called value. Now you'll notice we're using integers in here and a double out here. So I'll right click and change the representation of the numeric to an I32. We want to save this value for the next iteration so we'll branch the wire and pass it out into our shift register. I'll clean up the code. And we have one more case to address. When the user isn't pressing the button, we just want to save the same value and not increment it. Now we're ready to run our code. I'll press Control E to switch back to the front panel and I'll click the Run button. Now, when I press the button, you'll notice the count value counts really fast while I'm holding the button. This isn't exactly what we wanted, so let's stop the VI and see if we can figure out why that happens. So this loop executes as fast as it can, and if the button's pressed, it increments the value. It doesn't check what the state of the button was before to see if this was a new press. So let's save the button state and only increment the value when we've just pressed the button. I'll right click to create another shift register. And this time we're storing a Boolean value. 
So we'll default it to false by creating a false constant. This shift register represents the last value of the button. So we'll wire in the output from our digital read into the right shift register. We only want to increment the count value if the button is pressed, so if this is true, but last time it was false. We can do that by inverting the last value using a not and anding the current value and the inverted previous value. All right, now let's look at this code. If the current value is true and the previous value is false, we'll execute the true statement and increment the count. Otherwise, we'll keep the same count. Let's switch to the front panel and run the code. Since we initialized our count shift register to zero, the value will return to zero when I run the VI. And now when I press the button, and hold it, you can see we only get one count per button press. I'll click stop to stop the VI. And that does it for our push button basics. Think about how you could modify this code to display the value of the count on LEDs rather than just a numeric indicator. Or how could you maybe use three buttons to control the R, G, and B values of an RGB LED? In the next section, we'll use a piezo buzzer to make sounds and maybe even play a simple melody. Make sure to check out labviewmakerhub.com for more tutorials and projects, and ask any questions you have on the MakerHub forums at labviewmakerhub.com forums.